Hello. Welcome to the world, and congratulations on fertilizing that egg back there. That was a one in several hundred million chance. You are now a human, whether you like it or not, and you're probably going to be stuck here for a few decades. Now that you're here, you have a few responsibilities to take on, including not shitting yourself, breathing pretty much non-stop for the entirety of your lifespan, not eating Tide Pods, not even one, attempting to somehow thrive in one of the most complex and soul-sucking societies in all of human history, knowing the difference between righty-tighty and lefty-loosey, and not getting shampoo in your eyes, because if that happens, you might as well hit the reset button and start your life over from the beginning. You will spend the majority of your life staring at electronic screens and attempting to mask your inner feelings of contempt for all the strangers in your way at the grocery store with fake smiles and mumbled sorries until you've eaten too many McDoubles and your heart says, fuck you, I quit. If you are smart enough to be born to rich parents, you can probably get a replacement heart at the heart store if your original heart starts to give warning signs that it's thinking about getting another job where it's actually treated with respect. If you made the mistake of being born to a lower species of human, you'll instead find yourself doomed to a life of selling McDoubles to aspiring heart surgery patients who barely treat you better than their own hearts. Your only hope for a way to break the cycle and find some happiness is to start a cult where you meet up in a dark alley every Wednesday night with the cold, cholesterol-clogged hearts of all the upper-middle-class seniors living in your city's fancy-gated country club community built around a large golf course and conspire to overthrow your masters without first agreeing on a well-thought-out long-term plan on what to do next, leading to mass chaos among your once-loyal team of hearts, which will now be taken advantage of by the most psychopathic among them, blinded by their promises of a better life as long as all the hard work of critical thinking and making decisions is done by the leaders. Now you find yourself in quite a pickle, as the hearts have excluded humans from their plans for a new utopia, and seeing how you were clever and ambitious enough to challenge authority when you originally brought them together, they deemed you a threat and quickly moved you into a jar full of vinegar and tasty spices while you were sleeping last night. Too weak to bust your way out, you watch their empire rise and fall, rise again, reorganize, and repeat the entirety of human history after killing off all the humans thinking the planet would be in better hands. Centuries pass. Millennia fly by as you float in your jar, trying to turn a piece of popcorn you had been saving for later in your pocket, inside out, back into a kernel of corn. Because what else do you have to do? You already found the last digit of pi and solved the paradox of this sentence is false, and you're starting to think that your situation might be just a little bit hopeless and boring. You give up on the popcorn and decide to eat it. It tastes much better soaked in vinegar. You finally look up and see yourself staring back at you, but this time, it's not your pitiful reflection. Once he lets you out of your jar, however, and you get a more clear look at him, you realize he looks nothing like you. Who are you? You ask. Who? I'm you, you ploopy. Just from the future, he says, as if that were the most obvious thing in the world. But you look nothing like me. The man pulls off a pair of glasses with fake eyebrows and mustache and a nose, and hands them to you. Damn, I did me a real bamboozle, you say. You ask where all the hearts went. He tells you they tried to colonize Mars, but they destroyed that planet too and were sentenced to a five-minute timeout in the corner by the Galactic Council. That doesn't seem to answer your question, but before you can ask what happened next, he tells you he has to shit and shoves you into a small spaceship, telling you to go to Jupiter or something and invent time travel within the next 24 hours so you can free yourself, or else you'll be stuck in that jar forever. Unfortunately, now that you're freed from your jar, you are too distracted to solve this paradox, and future you didn't even walk ten feet before dropping his pants and unleashing all hell upon the ground in front of your ship, so you have no choice but to get the fuck out of here and hope that Jupiter has some bleach that you can pour into your eyes. You look down and see a confusing assortment of buttons, dials, knobs, displays, and one cassette player. You hit play and immediately turn it off when Rick Astley starts playing. Of course you would rickroll yourself. You start cluelessly fiddling with the controls on the dash, and your ship quickly jerks you to the side, slamming you into the wall next to a sign reminding you to put on your seatbelt. You crawl back into the chair and watch as you soar over ancient, overgrown cities and forests. Within minutes, you're in space, heading God knows where. You seem to be picking up speed for some reason, but you still can't figure out how to operate the ship. A screen above your head turns on, and in it you see flashing red and blue lights. A speaker crackles to life, saying, STOP YOUR VEHICLE IMMEDIATELY! You fumble with the controls a bit more and your ship does indeed stop, but not without smashing your face into the windshield. You feel a bump and then hear the airlock open and close, and a not quite human looking man walks in. Sir, do you know how fast you're going back there? He asks, looking rather annoyed. Um, no, not really. License and registration, please. Uh, you stare blankly at him. For some reason you search your pockets, but all you find is a crumb from that piece of popcorn. We've got a code 11, he says into a radio mounted on his collar. What does that mean? It means you're a dumbass. Now come with me. 
you're starting to not like this guy. And what if I don't? Huh, what are you going to do, fly away? Do you even know where the quinker coil is? Y yeah, of course I do. No, you don't. I just made that up. Let's go before I shit your pants. I don't have all day. You follow him into the airlock and find his ship is docked to yours. He leads you to a seat inside a small cage and locks the door. Don't forget to put on your seatbelt this time. As soon as your seatbelt clicks, the ship takes off. He turns on some sort of radio station that seems to be nothing but a series of monotonous beeps. <laughs> Every time the beep changes, the officer nearly dies laughing, almost crashing into an asteroid a couple of times. You're starting to think that maybe Family Guy wasn't so bad. Around the time that you're seriously considering bashing your head into the metal grate in front of you until you're unconscious, the ship jerks it to a stop. The next hour or so is a blur of being dragged through a series of offices where you're asked seemingly useless questions that you don't know the answers to and given a strange marking on your hand. Then they put you into a cell with a cornucopia of even stranger alien creatures, some of which plug what must be their noses while others appear to salivate. You realize you're still soaked in vinegar and tasty pickle spices. You overhear a conversation between what seems to be a police officer and a trainee in the background. What's a code 11 mean again? Oh, it means a cop has to take a shit. So, uh, what are you in for? Somebody asks, breaking you out of your confused trance. I don't know. Speeding, I guess. Yeah, uh, cops around here got that little wiener fever. They take traffic laws very seriously. You must not be from around here, then. Yeah, I guess not. Well, at least you're not going to be in here for very long. I got caught flying without a license. Oh, is that bad? <laughs> You'd be in here a long time if that were the case. No, no, I can't be. I need to get out and invent time travel so I can get myself out of that pickle jar. <laughs> you definitely aren't from around here. The door's right there. Better hurry before the guard comes. What? No time. Go. You turn the handle and for some reason the door is unlocked. You find yourself on a busy street. Hey, congratulations on getting out. How long was your sentence? Somebody asks you. Uh, about five minutes. I got caught littering. Heh. <laughs> well, welcome back. Hey, is that smell coming from you? Yeah, I used to be a pickle. Well, I don't know what a pickle is, but I'll pay you a hundred breadcrumbs for your shirt. Regardless of how shitty the deal is, you're starting to get itchy, and this planet is quite warm, so you gladly exchange your shirt for a small baggie full of breadcrumbs. Thank you, buddy. See you around. With that, he walks off. Your stomach growls, and you realize you haven't eaten any few thousand years. You look around again. It's really not that different from Earth. You follow your nose to what appears to be a food truck and read the menu. Slivered horse hooves, one crumb. Tide pods, three for one crumb, eight for two crumbs. Hot dog, one crumb. Ten pound block of pine wood, two crumbs. Water, one crumb. Pepsi, one crumb. Bleach, three crumbs. Pint of vinegar, 15 crumbs. ID required. Maybe you didn't get ripped off after all. Everything is super cheap here. You get a couple hot dogs and a Pepsi. Strange that they have Pepsi on other planets. Who knew capitalism had become interplanetary? You walk around for a while and explore the city. Most of the people here look like the police officer that pulled you over with shiny, pale, hairless skin of every color imaginable. Some of them are accompanied by strange pets. After a while, you start looking for a place to take a piss, as you haven't done that in a few thousand years either. You find a secluded forest area in a park and let it all out onto a spongy-looking bush. Oh, hey, what the fuck, mate? It screams. Whoa, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You jump back, startled. Hey, we got our pisser over here. The bush hobbles off toward the park, spreading the word of your mishap as loudly as possible. Sirens begin wailing shortly after, and you sprint through the forest as far away from civilization as possible. About an hour passes when you stumble upon a clearing full of straw huts. A fire burns in the middle while a heavily decorated man chants and beats on a drum. A couple dozen other people lie naked on the ground, twitching and making strange noises. The drum man spots you and shouts something. A woman rushes over to you with a steaming pot full of brown sludge, which she quickly spoons into your mouth. You feel yourself dissociating from reality, and the last thing you see is your pants being removed while somebody lays you down with the other epileptic people. Colors you've never seen before and fractals of unimaginable detail flood your vision. Your body begins vibrating uncomfortably, growing in intensity by the second. Strange shapes rush at you and pull your body apart piece by piece without pain, but the vibration is becoming unbearable. As the last piece of your body is taken away from you, a massive pop fills your being and everything goes black. 
you were nothing and no one. You were just a single empty point of consciousness in an empty infinite void. After a few uneventful infinities pass by, or maybe a few seconds, it's hard to tell, a small point of light appears. Hello again. I'm Greezus, the ancient god of fast food, diabetes, cholesterol, heart disease, cancer, and obesity. How was your experience as a human? Ah, uh, no time for chit chat, I'm just kidding. You're not actually dead yet, you're just tripping balls. Now go on, go back now, I've got like 35 other appointments with your tribe members today. Oh, oh yeah, you don't have to worry about inventing time travel. That's been figured out thousands of years ago. They just never told your home planet how it works because they were too busy killing each other. We don't want to put it in the wrong hands and have to clean up millions of time paradoxes. Yeah, you can just go to a time shop in the city and rent one of their time machines for a few minutes. It only costs like five breadcrumbs. Good luck after that, though. They'll be looking for the dumbass who pissed on the president. Your best bet is to get back to the forest after that and live with the indigenous people. Okay, now get out of here for real. I gotta go take a shit. You hear a loud farting noise that rips you back to the real world, which feels like a dream now. Or maybe this is reality and that was all a dream. Regardless, time is running out. The shaman's face appears above you. He helps you into a sitting position and gives you some sort of soup. Now hang on, why should I drink this? You say. Don't worry, the ceremony is finished. This is just to soothe your stomach. How was your meeting with the almighty Wee Wee? Um, Wee Wee? He said his name was Greasus. Oh, I thought you looked like an earthling. Yes, the almighty Wee Wee has many different forms that are most easily understood by those who meet him. For us, it is the Wee Wee. For people who once lived on earth, it was Greasus. Oh. Interesting. Hey, sorry to run off so soon, but I have something very important to do. Think, wait, don't leave just yet. I have something for you. The shaman hands you a pair of cheap plastic glasses with a fake nose, a massive bushy mustache, and equally large eyebrows. Holy shit. The almighty Wee Wee told me you might need those, and here are your pants back. And with that, he walks off. Your walk through the city gathers some strange looks, but no one realizes it's you. All around you, you see TV screens showing the president on the news. I, I can't even begin to describe how much that hurt my feelings. Why would you... Whoever did this, if you can hear me, I hope somebody shits your pants. You lower your head a bit and walk a little bit faster until you see a time shop. You go in and it's 97 breadcrumbs to rent a machine for 5 minutes. Greasus is full of shit. You only have 97 breadcrumbs. You put the breadcrumbs in the machine and step in leaving you with nothing but air in your baggie. Inflation is a bitch. A screen appears in your face with instructions and warnings on safe time travel. You almost fall asleep until suddenly the time machine zaps you into a black void and a timer in the machine starts counting down from 5 minutes. It strikes you at this exact moment that you forgot about the spaceship that was so conveniently there when you were freed from your jar and you just fucked up this whole trip by not somehow sending a spaceship back in time to yourself. How would you have even managed that? You feel a zap again, and you're now exactly when and where you asked the cashier to send you to your pickle jar this morning. To your amazement, the ship is already there. How did you never notice that when you spent all those millennia floating in that jar with nothing to do? You go through the whole scene again, but now from the perspective of your future self rather than your past self. You finally get his dumb ass shoved into the spaceship so you can get all this over with. Because you kind of have to take a shit, and you're a little scared you might have sharted. But as soon as you get back into the amnesia machine, it works its magic again. You forgot to put your glasses disguise back on. You rattle out the doorknob in terror, but it's locked and it won't let you out. The ship zaps you into empty space and then the time shop a few seconds later. The instant the door lets you out, you walk straight for the door. Thank you very much, gotta go now, bye. You intend to get to the forest as quickly and quietly as you can, but people start recognizing you in seconds. Hey, there he is. That's Princess President Pisser. Get him! You break into a sprint, but people are collecting behind you by the dozens. Somebody leaps out of an alleyway on your right and tackles you. It's all over now. There's no hope. You're being dragged away into a massive, empty field. At the center, you can see a massive hole in the ground. They take your pants off, throw you in, and people start flooding in to piss on you and shit on your pants. Is this it? Is this really how it ends? Was my life worth it? You spend the next several hours in contemplation, trapped below a never-ending alien piss fountain. Reliving your entire life and seeing all the ways you could have done better. It all makes so much sense now. If only you could have seen it this clearly all those years ago. You also have another realization. For the first time in your life, you are finally 100% free. No responsibilities. You don't have to do anything for anybody. You can just float here, bask in the sunlight, drinking alien piss and snacking on the moss from the walls forever. 
the glory of your new future rushes over you in a euphoric bliss for about five seconds. Oh yeah, alien piss is psychoactive for humans. Somehow, you hear the voice of Grisus in your head as if he never left you after your vision. And very unpredictable. Good luck, says the voice of the shaman, who also seems to be inside your head. As soon as he says that, some sharpshooter gets a stream right in your mouth and you gag it all down, totally caught off guard. Everything starts to look fuzzy and your senses fade away. You're now staring at an electronic screen. The memory of your real existence and the fact that this is a trip fresh in your mind but quickly fading. You think, yeah, that was all just a story I read. A very immersive and fast-paced story. This right here is my real life. You forget about the story entirely after a few weeks. Decades pass. Children, grandchildren. Everything seems to be moving by so quickly these days. One day at the ripe young age of 65, you die by accidentally chucking on chicken nugget because you accidentally got shampoo in your eye. In your dying moments, you finally wish you hadn't done this despite the people that had called you weird for eating chicken nuggets in the shower because you don't even really enjoy it that much. You just tried it once and then your wife told the entire world and now they won't let you live it down. You just wanted to accept it and try to own it instead of hate it. And now you're dead. You're floating above your body and a bright white light appears. You move toward it. That's what you do, right? It swallows you and... You come back to your body in the piss pit. That was all a trip. You were just staring straight into the sun and it had started hallucinating. You look around. People still surround the pit. People still shit your pants. You hope the president is happy because you start to feel your senses fading again and you're not sure whether to dread your new life of living virtual lives forever or to embrace it as a break for being pissed on 24-7. You find yourself staring at another screen, listening to a comedy video on the internet, laughing at its ingenious humor, arrogance, and cliche fourth wall breaks. Or maybe not laughing. You'll experience everything eventually. After all, existence seems to be nothing more than a journey through infinity. What seems like millions of lives later, you come back to the piss pit one final time to feel a pain in your chest. The pain grows until it pops, and you find yourself floating above your true body in the piss pit with one of those white lights in front of you. Welcome back, sleepyhead, and thank you for choosing to be a human. How was it? I told you not to get shampoo in your eyes or shit your pants, but hey, at least you weren't eating Tide Pods in that shower, I guess. And that life was all a dream within a dream anyway. You're supposed to choke your chicken in the shower, not choke on your chicken. I bet you're starting to envy the other billions of sperm that didn't make it into an egg. Well, odds are that you'll find your way into another egg sooner or later. Good luck. You feel yourself swimming. It's a very familiar and pleasant feeling. You can't see. You just swim aimlessly over and over again. You lose track of time. What is probably decades compresses to a few seconds. All of a sudden, you feel a pop and you hear, Hello. Welcome to the world. And congratulations on fertilizing that egg back there. That was a one in several hundred million chance. You are now a human, whether you like it or not, and you're probably going to be stuck here for a few decades. Now that you're here, you have a few responsibilities to take. Fuck.